Hi, I am Mayim Bialik. This is my kitchen. Come on in. <laughs> the beautiful thing about this kitchen is that it is made of reclaimed wood from this very house, and the cabinets are built inside and out, out of the wood that used to be the kids' room upstairs. So um, each cabinet is different, each one is very unique. Sometimes I do get splinters, but that's okay. The open shelving, which is a feature of a lot of rustic kind of farmhouse kitchens, is also reclaimed wood from this house when it was under construction, and that's really special. The counters are poured concrete, and the entire kitchen was made by one man who I dated for a long time, who's a very, very fine Finnish carpenter. He did this entire kitchen by himself, inside and out, including the poured concrete counters. The ceiling is a really fun feature of this kitchen. Um, it is a, a tin ceiling that was also pieced together um, by <laughs> the ex-boyfriend carpenter, um, one by one, and the lights are actually vintage chicken bird feeders uh, that, when inverted, used to hold seeds that chickens would get to peck through. So that is the kitchen and there's cobwebs, which is something that's always in the kitchens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One of my favorite things about this kitchen is a large farmhouse sink. It is copper. It is very difficult to clean, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but this contraption is one of those things that I decided to spend extra money on hoping that it would be worth it in terms of how much I used it and it is super duper worth it because it's a really really awesome feature of my kitchen and it does make cleaning and cooking very easy. Um, it confuses just about everyone who tries to turn it on but um, we love it. We love it. I come from a long line of cooks. My grandmother was Hungarian and cooking and baking was a very important part of her life, which she passed on to my mother, my mother passed on to me. Uh, I do love antique things that are usable in my kitchen and I collect them from a variety of places. Um, this platter was actually my grandmother's that was brought from Poland, so that's exciting. My grandmother on the other side. This is a vintage nut meat chopper. Um, I like decorative things in my kitchen, but most everything here is used and is also functional. I have a very large collection of cookbooks, as many cooks and bakers do. I also have a special selection of cookbooks that are just for Jewish holidays. I keep those tucked away. Um, but the cookbooks that I choose to have out are all of the vegan cookbooks that I love and use. So here we have Alicia Silverstone's Kind Diet. I have the Candle Cafe cookbook, Real Food Daily. The Blossom Cookbook, the vegan restaurant in New York called Blossom, um, and also Chloe, the Chloe um, cookbook. On this side of the kitchen, true story, we have Mayim's Vegan Table, which is my cookbook, which I decorated. And it is very, very well used. It is a well used cookbook. We actually use this cookbook a lot. Let's see what's in the fridge. Um, <laughs> This is the end of a long stretch that I had with my boys, which is why it's not the fullest fridge. But um, some of the things that I pretty much always have in the fridge are berries. So I have strawberries, blueberries, and raspberries. It's been very difficult to get a lot of the vegan things that are staples of our diet during the quarantine. Um, but we actually have um, a homeschool co-op that has a relationship with a farmer who brings uh, his produce to town, and so that's how I've been getting my fresh produce. This is um, fava bean dip that I made from fresh favas. I have um, some staples of a vegan fridge. I have rice dream, I have vegan margarine. Um, these are not real eggs, they're fake eggs, just for fun, they're fake. Um, I also have, this is a jam that my ex-husband made, um, a lemon jam from the lemons in his, um, in his yard and very special treat, we have some artichokes and we steam them and I make garlic butter. Three things you will always find in my pantry are raw cashews, because I use cashews to make vegan ricotta and all sorts of vegan cheese things. You will always find oats, because I do like oats. I use them for baking, but also just for eating. And you will always find cans of beans. As a vegan, beans are a very important part of our diet, and there's always beans, usually pinto beans, and often white beans, cannellini, I think they're called. Three things that you will never find in my kitchen, besides animal products, I guess, um, are cookies. We do not have a sweet tooth in this house. There's some dark chocolate, but really never cookies, except once a year. 
There's one Girl Scout cookie that's vegan and those are Thin Mints, but otherwise no cookies in our house. You will never find, <laughs> you will never find fun cereal. This sounds like the list my children are making about things that are wrong with mama's kitchen. Um, we don't eat sugar cereal in this house. We really don't eat cereal at all. I have like a organic Rice Krispie kind of thing, but never sugary cereal. You won't find that either. I sound like a boring mom. Sometimes you'll find honey roasted peanuts, honey roasted peanuts, but usually when they're in the house, I eat them all, so I stop buying them. So you won't find them here. If I could change one thing about my kitchen, I think I would like it to be a little bigger. There actually used to be um, a hallway attached to this kitchen where this pantry now is. It was a very awkward space though, so we closed it off and turned it into a little bathroom on the other side of this kitchen. But I do miss having that space. It's also very, very beautiful and I'm very grateful for it, but I could use a little more wiggle room because when it's me and two boys and three cats, it gets a little crowded. There's been more than one significant disaster in this kitchen. I used to have a beautiful set of um, like tea towels that my friend Chanel made and they were personalized. They had my name on one and each of my boys' names on another. And what those cloths were perfect for is when I would have uh, bread that was rising, I make challah for Shabbat, and I would put that towel over the bowl to let the bread rise. Um, you're supposed to do that in a warm place, and sometimes when it's cold, I'll heat up the oven just a little bit so that I have a warm space to let the dough rise. What happens is if you forget to turn the oven off and you put the dough in with a tea towel, it ignites. I no longer have those tea towels because they've all burned on separate occasions. Thank you for coming to my kitchen. I hope you enjoyed the tour and have a good day.